Welcome back to the Girl Dinner Book Club podcast. I am Haley, and I'm here with my best friend Elena, That's and we're me. gonna we're gonna talk about Lee Bardugo's new book, The Familiar. But before we do, um, I just want to say, if there's anything I've learned from doing these video episodes, it's that <laughs> I hate myself and the person that I portray on camera. Um, <laughs> I had just gotten my lips done before we recorded the last two episodes. So I just keep like watching those and seeing myself like preen in the camera, like a chimp, <laughs> like a blow up doll chimp. I don't know, but look, I think it's normal when you're first doing this video thing that you see yourself a lot, obviously. I don't know. I try to focus on your camera and like just the camera in general instead of mine. I I, just I try and focus on exist. you because I don't want to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, just like a, a normal human reaction, honestly. I'm like, why do I sound so pretentious? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's really made me get introspective. Anyway. Um, Maybe it'll help us become better people or not. I, I don't know. I hope so. It, it might. <laughs> Getting an outside perspective as to what I look like when I talk and say things. Maybe that'll help me be less annoying. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh my god. Also, friends, if this is your first time joining us, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can hang out with us more often <laughs> and hear all the things about books. We do book reviews, we do book synopsis, we just talk about the books that we read and other general bookish content. So, mm -hmm. if that's your vibe, come hang out with us. Come hang out. Um, also, I'm really sorry if there's like weird noises in the background. My boyfriend is taking a, a nap like right here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so if you hear any like farting, snoring. We can get a little Trent ASMR. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to be great. So love that. Yeah, we read we read the familiar. It's brand new. And yeah, it dropped April 9th. So we, we have so we, many we thoughts. Oh yeah, we went through it pretty quick, and mm, it's banging. I love Lee Bardugo, but like, I've never read. This is different. Yeah, I've never read Lee Bardugo before. I bought her Shadow and Bone series. I plan on reading that. I've heard nothing but good things. So this was you should read Night definitely. Oh, I'm down. I yeah, I started looking through like what other books she had written because after yeah, this, I was like, good. oh okay. And I will say this is definitely something so different than I have been reading lately. And it was so refreshing. But before we go any further, I think we should start off with given given a little bit of the synopsis that's provided for the book, and then we can start breaking it down. But God, it's so good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I didn't know awesome. what I was expecting going into this book. I came out of it like, wow. That was something very unique. Yes, um, it really is. I enjoyed it so much. Anyways, okay, read the synopsis. My bad. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, so I'm probably going to pronounce so many names incorrectly because I am not a native Spanish speaker, but I am going to do my best, so don't come for me. And I can't even use like the Spanish thing as like an excuse because honestly, these names could be written in plain freaking English and I would still... <laughs> Some of mispronounce them are... all of them. <laughs> okay, so yeah, but some <laughs> some of them are like San Santan Hill, Santan Hill. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the familiar's name. Yeah, that's are we just gonna are we just gonna call him the familiar? I'm going to call him the familiar. I'm not gonna try to pronounce his name and make a fool of myself. <laughs> it is kind of a sexy name, though. It is Santanhel. a little bit. Yeah. So we have. Set in the Spanish Golden Age, during a time of high-stakes political intrigue and glittering wealth, The Familiar follows Luzia, a servant in the household of an impoverished Spanish nobleman who reveals a talent for little miracles. Her social climbing mistress demands Luzia use her gifts to win over Madrid's most powerful players, but what begins as a simple amusement takes a dangerous turn. Luzia will need to use every bit of her wit and will to survive. Even the help of the familiar Santanjel. <laughs> Santanjel, an immortal familiar whose own secrets could prove deadly for them both. So that doesn't give you too much, but it gives you enough. Setting starts off in a late of like 16th century Spain, essentially. And yeah. It's got a 
so this is considered uh, the genre is what historical um, fantasy is what I've seen it called a lot, a historical fantasy, because it's like rooted in like the the real, you know, like the Spanish Inquisition. And yeah, but it yeah. And some of it felt a little more like. Like a touch of magical realism to me. I don't know. Right, right. It's an interesting mix of things. Yeah, there's a lot like yeah. going on, definitely for sure. So that is a perfect segue into the setting, which, well, setting slash world building is kind of like one of the things that we talked about with this. So obviously we have the setting that is is more of this like realism type of deal of you know what it was like there's not too much i guess descriptor of like the actual city of madrid because it's like well it's it's a real city and she's not describing you know we're not trying to remake the wheel here right exactly however i felt like she did do a pretty decent job with um you know a lot of the settings where things are taking place like their house um the house that luzia is working in for the um impoverished nobles that we're referring to that was very cool um along with a lot of the other places that she went to like they were mostly described but it's really not like that kind of thing like there's really not too much like i guess atmosphere you would say but i don't think it detracts from the story either no, I do kind of like this. Um, I don't. I hesitate to say magic system because mm-hmm. there are m- multiple different types of magic that she brings up within this story that really have no relation to one another, right. and none of it's really described. We don't no. know where it comes from. I don't even know if I would call it a system. Does it even qualify as being a magic system? I don't system? think so because like that's really the thing that has come into this is like is this religion influenced you know there's this there's a lot of overtones of religion it was very heavy during this time you know it's the christians running amok and the catholics running amok and everything just basically basically versus everybody else yeah exactly and and so there's a really fine line between you performing miracles and you performing like Satanism. <laughs> With, yeah, witchcraft and you're going to get burned at the stake. Yeah, is... exactly. Ugh. So, yeah, exactly. So that's that's something I found like pretty intriguing. But yeah, we really don't get any explanation on where the magic comes from for this girl. And it doesn't seem it's it's obviously a very rare thing. So that's that's pretty neat because as we go through this, we end up meeting other characters who do have these like magical abilities and stuff, but it's just like, they're just kind of there and they all have well, different means of doing things. Yes. Yeah, some of them have magical abilities. Others are just total frauds. Yeah. And yeah, like you yeah. can, you never know who is actually right. got some sort of ability or not, or where it comes from. One of the characters they bring in, um, she's able to have visions of the future and she Mm -hmm. says it's because she speaks to an angel and we don't really know if that's where it comes from or i I was like hoping for an explanation because she's speaking to some other entity like right like it really is that so i think honestly we should just so i just want to say that you know before we segue more into the characters because i feel like we're just going to spend a lot of time talking about the characters because the characters are what made this story like hands yeah. down like over the setting and the world building and everything else the characters are where it's at like mm-hmm. her characters are so freaking good like they're just oh, mm. very well written very yes. so much depth um, yes the, seriously the setting and the world building is definitely just a backdrop to definitely Everything you know, else the, that's going the on. The plot and the characters. Oh, yeah. 1,000, it's still, 1,000%. It still adds, like, an element of intrigue. Like, all of the politics and stuff are very interesting within yeah, this yeah. world that she's created. But aside from that, it's mostly just very, very plot-driven. Oh, So we can, we can go ahead and move into talking about the characters, if you like. I, oh my god, I loved Lucia. I Me too. So much. She was such a good main character. Oh my god. If you end up not liking this character, I will be 
so unbelievably shocked because Mm -hmm. I mean, chef's kiss character progression. We have character growth, like real. Yeah. Yes. Seriously. Her wants and her needs and how she is just trying to remain invisible as she's the scullion. And when her mistress finds out that she is able to perform these small miracles by this little accident of her performing it to turn this burnt bread to, you know, normal, it really changes her life. And as soon as she starts to get this attention and the things that she wants, you know, she really sees a future for herself and who wouldn't. And so she really tries to take it, you know, to the next step and and she wants more. And it's just, it's great. She is beautifully freaking written. I could not get enough of her. Yeah, I did. I did like that, like that sense of ambition had always been there within her, but she just didn't really know how to put it into action until, you know, circumstance made it to where she was able to. Um, I also like that she knew that some of the decisions she was making maybe weren't the smartest decisions to be making, and she just didn't care. Like, yeah, that because felt... sometimes you're just in that position where yeah, you're that just felt like so real to me. Yeah, you know you should keep your mouth shut, but like, <laughs> let's be real. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes things need to be said. Okay, <laughs> and also her realizing that, like, you know, some of the people around her that she thought were there for her or looking out for her really just had their own interests at heart, and she learns through some unfortunate circumstances that she needs to be looking out for herself more than anybody. Oh, definitely. <sighs> yeah. I, I, and I, I, you know, we love a strong female main character and she definitely was the embodiment of that. I agree. And also just like, this is one of those books I will say throughout the whole thing, reading it, not once did, was I pulled out of it to be like, why is she making this decision? Mm-hmm. What, what is going on here? You know, every decision that she makes felt so organic and true to her character. And it just made sense. Like everything she did was just like, girl, I got you. Yeah. Hell yeah. I probably would have done the same thing. Right. How could you not? You know, based on like she has a really messed up family history and backstory. You know, she shoved into this life, which sucks. She's surrounded by people who suck and who are all miserable, basically, Mm -hmm. you know, so it it makes sense why she is a lot of the way that she is. But her like just her single handedly is what is driving this story just so hard. I do think a great character. Yeah, I do think um, Santan Hell had a lot to do with that as well, though. Uh, And I think part of the reason why is because you can tell throughout their relationship that they both have like all of these secrets that they're trying to hide. We know what hers are. We don't know what his are. And I feel like that forms like this sense of companionship between them because I don't think this is a spoiler because it's brought up very early on that Mm -hmm. she is Jewish, Mm -hmm. but she's obviously in hiding. I think her parents were the ones that were baptized originally. And then she was, born into it and also baptized so she is jewish and hiding and then the way that her magic works is she sings in a mix of hebrew and other languages languages. yeah yeah so she can't you know she can't let people hear that and when it's time for her to start like performing these miracles she's really struggling to figure out how she's going to do that without exposing herself and then being essentially burned at the stake Mm-hmm. Which is where Santan Hill comes in and he helps her and he's mysterious and sexy and dark. Well, he's and... not sexy at first, but he, yeah, he pulls well... a little Nanny McPhee where he goes a little, he a little funky. And then as time goes on, he gets sexy. She does say that he's like, <laughs> um, what did she say? That he was like beautiful, but also, I don't know, like you look at him and you're like, wow, like he could be really gorgeous, but he's also kind of scary and looks like he's about to die. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I love the theme of, like, everyone is afraid of him. Like, all all of Spain is very put off by this man, this familiar. And she does not care. She yeah, she's given one single fuck. Because <laughs> she is normally very reserved with her 
you know, mistress and, and stuff. I don't know if that's technically her mistress, but her, her employers and she, the, is it the Ordaños, I think? Yeah. Um, so she, you know, is obviously like, you know, she keeps it together or whatever, but with him and with certain people, she will get a little snappy if she knows she can get away with it. Yeah. And, and I do it's think great. It's, it's that sense of companionship they have where she just feels Definitely. comfortable being herself around him. Um, and he definitely feels comfortable being himself around her as well, which is fun. I like getting to see him slowly open up through the book. Oh, definitely. And I also do love that everybody is scared of him because there's just something about a morally gray male main character that like everybody's terrified of. It gave me like slight resand vibes, but he's definitely a lot more morally gray. Oh, for sure. But I, yeah. I really enjoyed, like, their relationship and how it goes on. We should say, like, there is not a ton of smut in this book or any no, at I mean, all. The, that's not but what this is intended to be, though. This it's isn't, not. Like, a romance. Yeah, there, there isn't. Yeah, there isn't just, like, this, this super, you know, heavy theme of romance. It's, like, an underlying thing that organically grows, and it's really nice throughout it. And I loved yeah, it. I, loved I it. thought it was really, really nice. It was really well done. A character that I liked unexpectedly only because of her character growth and i will say like all of the characters have character growth it's not just luzia that i feel like got this close detail to attention her mistress uh valentina she starts off and is horrible and she she's she pretty much stays that way however it's multifaceted. Like there's, there's always explanations for why characters are the way they are. And they end up making decisions later on where you're just like, okay, wow, like maybe you can be redeemable. So I really yeah. like that about all of her characters. The ones that some of the ones that sucked ended up being like redeemable later on, you know, there were, and there were some two of them, that were not. Yeah. But... I was like, there's definitely plenty that are absolutely not. But yeah. they're like the the few that are, I was just like, wow, like I love that. I, I really felt like this was more realism in the realms of getting people that don't just stay the same. They experience Yeah, they weren't stagnant events. at all. They were they were yeah. very fluid characters. I loved that. That was one of my favorite things about it. Yeah. I do I do feel like Santon Hill has the most character growth aside from Lucia. Agreed. Whereas he starts off as like just this husk of a person mm -hmm. and it literally, not, yeah, not only has like emotional and like mental character growth, but also like he physically changes throughout the book. And I feel like that's mm -hmm. a really like nice portrayal um, or a representation of like what's going on internally. Like you can literally see it happening as he changes in his exterior and that I just I thought that was so cool. Um, it really is. His backstory and everything that happens with him, God, it's amazing. Her explanation yeah. of, like, everything, it's just so cool. Like, when the you way know that something's she... going on for so long, too, and you're just right. waiting yeah. for it, and then she finally delivers, and it was, I, I loved it. It was so And good. it's, like, the only explanation that you get of any kind of, like, powers or magic or anything like that. The rest is just left up to yeah. Figure your it out. interpretation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But his, like, we do kind of get it. And I really loved the way that she incorporated this magical fairy tale-esque type of vibe, like, into this, like, really realistic, dark setting. And it was just, I don't know. It was just awesome. Like, it and the was, fact it that was he, so good. he tells Lucia his own story. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I, it kind of reminded me of um, being puppy cat. When Puppy what? Cat is telling B about the prince. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the space prince and what happens to him. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually, you know, it's actually. Okay, caught. yeah, I, I'm caught up there. At first, yeah. I was just like, I, okay. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, I'm trying to incorporate pastel colors into this world of black velvet, but. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely completely sense. different vibes, but. Yeah, I, the... I totally get what you mean on like how he like told the story and everything. Yeah, yeah I, I really enjoyed that. Um, outside of that, yeah, I mean, we meet some, you know, the big bad. He kind of sucks. Like kind he's, of like he's a kind literally of, kind the of a worst. Lot. He's a great enemy. I will say that he he is once again. We have 
layers to this man. We have layers of suck, and we love that. He's yeah, not he had, just... Yeah, he had reverse character progression. Him and one oh, other yeah. character had mm -hmm. that thing where they, like, start off, and they're like, okay, you're an okay person. You're decent. And then just become terrible throughout oh, yeah. the rest of the story. Because oh, he starts yeah. off as, like, a you know, when he's a kid, he's so sweet and has all these great ideas of how he's going to do things when he gets older. And then he just is the perpetuates worst. the cycle. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's crazy. As for the other characters, I don't want to get, I don't want to get too deep into talking about too many others because there's just so many that come up that are just very unique, especially all the other people that she meets that have these miracles or, you know, other things like that. I think yeah, when that she's they performing are... the trials. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really just... Mm, God. For the sake of keeping it spoiler free, yeah, it's really hard to get into it is, yeah, too much it character really progression. Is. But God, they are so good. And we didn't say this in the beginning, but at the very end of our video, we'll probably throw in a couple of spoiler type things, but we will keep this spoiler free. Uh, we'll let you know when we switch over to the, the spoiler side of things. Is yeah. there anything else you want to mention about the characters? Mm, I think we're good on characters for the most part, because everything else I want to say is going to give it's something away. It's just very away. spoiler. I know, right? It's so hard. Oh, hold on. No, we can we talk about Hualit a little bit? Yeah. Her auntie, Auntie Hualit. Yeah. Just even in the beginning of this, and the, mm -hmm. I don't feel like this is a spoiler because it's like right off the bat in the very beginning of this. Her aunt is living like her bougie rich lady life in yep. town. And Lucia can only visit her when she goes to mass. Mm -hmm. And in these little encounters she's having with Holly, she's just not very nice to Lucia ever. Like all of the advice she's giving her seems a little questionable. Um, mm -hmm. And you sit and wonder like, why hasn't she tried to help more as yep. Lucy is like literally sleeping on a dirt floor every night and living in like complete poverty. Cause like her, her nobles her that she only works family. for. <laughs> yeah. And just does, does nothing. I don't know. I had some I think, feelings about her. I did too. And as I was going through the book, there is kind of an explanation when she's saying what she's done to get where she is. And so yeah. I was like, huh, interesting. I wonder if she has the perspective of, well, I got myself here. So it's not my job to get her anywhere. You know, she has a job. Yeah. She has a roof over her head. So that's on her. And I really felt like she had that kind of immature attitude. Of, like a little bit of a chip on her shoulder. Like I, I definitely. did this myself. You can do it yourself too. Yeah, I th I yeah. think that's where like a lot of that was fueled from. That was my take on it, at least. Is, and I think how part I of it, it had to do with like a little bit of jealousy too, just because she was the one that originally taught Lucia how to construct the words, say the right thing to make these right. little miracles happen. Mm -hmm. But Lucia is just gifted, and she yes. she was not ever like she could say the words. Some stuff would happen, but she never had any sort of gift with magic. And I think maybe that made her a little envious and spiteful. I could see that too. Definitely. And it's also like, I don't know. It kind of makes you wonder if she was able to actually perform miracles herself, would she still be that way? Or is she still just going to be stuck in the cycle? And it also, mm -hmm. God, the theme of like, all I kept thinking was, thank God <laughs> society has progressed that we do not need male patrons conducting our lives for us. Because could you imagine? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, not to get like super political, but my aunt had like posted something the other day. She's technically not my aunt. She's like my cousin. I've just always seen her as an aunt um, about like, I think it's like a senator or something that's running for office in Georgia. Do not quote me on this, by the way. We don't politics um, hardly at all, so <laughs> yeah. we're so far removed. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> he, like, went on the record and, like, said to some news outlet that his wife has to get his permission before reading a book. And I'm like, I would love to see 
my boyfriend try and stop me from reading any book. <laughs> what? Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, no, absolutely not. That is unacceptable. That yeah. is actually insane. Uh, she I mean, probably like... couldn't read any of the books on this shelf behind me. She definitely couldn't read the fairy smut. <laughs> like, yeah. She definitely couldn't read. What a read... loss for her. Uh, I mean, I know, not right? as big of a I'm... loss as having that loser as a husband, but <laughs> I don't know. I just like... There's like some crazy Handmaid's Tale type stuff going on in our government right now, and it's scary. So, yeah, we don't love that. I'm glad that we at least have good men. You know, at least they'll sign our permission slips when we need to go get Taco Bell. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> oh my God. At oh. least there's that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's hope the world doesn't go in that direction. Anywho, but yeah, with this book, I just found myself thinking that a lot of just like how bizarre it is. And I will say that's that's one point to the world building of it's it's really hammered into you with with how religious everybody is. And also just the belief that no one should be happy. It's like they really yeah. felt like being happy was like a freaking sin. Like it was like the polite thing to do to walk around feeling like shit. <laughs> Like, that was just the right thing. And I was like, this is so bizarre. Like, what the hell? This society I mean, could, was just not set up for that is being kind of, happy. A, I really hesitate to say <laughs> anything about, like, Catholicism <laughs> as a whole. But, like... <laughs> I don't know it's, anything about it. So it's kind of a, it is kind of a guilt-based religion. That's all I'm going to say. Got you. Okay, that's fair. So outside of, you know, Hualit being a whole ass mess, which we get we get this much progression from her. We towards, we get, towards the we, end I sympathized yeah. with her a little yeah. bit more when we got I, some of her internal monologue, but Yeah, definitely. But it was still just like too little too late, girl. Like yeah. you could, you could have done better. You could well, have been even doing she, better. This she time. does realize that too. She's right. like, no, no I, for sure. I probably could have done better. And I'm just sitting there reading this like, yes, yeah. you could have. <laughs> Which once again, I think it comes to that freaking realism, man. Sometimes you make all these decisions in your life thinking you're doing what's best for yourself and you're doing the best that you can with the situation. And you realize like, damn, I screwed up. Like I, I could have been going about this a whole different way. Yeah. So I appreciated that as well. Let's go into the style of her writing because it's very interesting. Like you, you kind of get a little bit of everybody. This isn't just a, we're getting one kind of perspective. And even when you are like mostly focused on Lucia, you also get like random tidbits from like other people also as well. Like it's like kind of jumping yeah. around a little bit. But yeah, in a are, very cohesive way. I did like that there were multiple perspectives. Normally, I'm a little iffy about that because sometimes it can be done in a way that just causes the reader a lot of confusion. Yes. I'm looking at you, George R. R. Martin, in the first <laughs> of the book. Oh my god! But like forty different perspectives, and every time yeah, you I flip a chapter, it's a it's a new dude, it's a different person in a different place with all this. Yeah, no, yeah. I could not. Absolutely not. This, this was, was not nice. like that. It, it was really cool because you could have multiple people in the same room and it could be mostly following Lucia, but then you get like, oh, this other person and they have like this brief thought and it's because of this reason or something happened to them or whatever. Yeah. And it was just really cool. Honestly, I, it felt like you were really encompassing all of the characters in the room at once. I and liked it, that you it just was got done little, very well. little brief snippets of insight while still mostly sticking with our yes. main character and her yeah. viewpoint. That was, and I thought it was very well done. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So I also really loved her, her descriptions of things and how she went about, um, and, and also just how, how people went about like talking and the whole like musical type thing when it came to her speaking, like all of her spells are these really cool like phrases that yeah. just kind of tie in with everything. I, I kind of felt like, I don't know if I would say like lyrical, but it was very, I don't know. It was just very fun. Like it was very 
nice. I, I can't even like come up with like a word to describe yeah, it. Yeah, it did. It did feel very, I don't know if like whimsical is the word, but like. That was kind of the word I was thinking too, but it's like, yeah. it doesn't feel like it's like whimsical. It's like, I don't know. I did like the, um, the way she described Lucy's process of like, okay, like, so this is what's happening. I'm going to use this particular yeah, phrase yeah. that I use for a lot of other things and it's going to apply in all of these areas. But then if something new was happening or if there was like a new conflict um, where she had to just sort of like figure something out and she's like hodgepodging all of these languages together into mm -hmm. this, you know, short kind of poetic phrase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of what it was. It was like, it was like poetry, like, mm -hmm. honestly. And I listened to some of this on the audiobook. I jumped back and forth because I was trying to be somewhat productive and clean <laughs> over this weekend. Listen, she, we love that. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was helpful. The narrator actually, like, sings some of the... Oh, that's cool. Some of her, I, spells, they're not really... I don't feel like they're spells. But, yeah, they're not really spells. It's just, like, that's just, like, the only way to describe it. Like, it's its, like, own thing, though. Like, yeah. that's what makes it so unique and, like, fun. Yeah. But the way she... I don't know, the way she was singing some of this stuff, like, girl, it was hitting. Like, yeah. she, <laughs> Like, She's like breaking pop. down on some Doja Cat real quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, no, it was. Uh, I love that. She was a pretty good narrator and very critical of audiobooks because that's what I do eight hours a day at work while I'm doing data entry and all sorts of other stuff. Is listen to audiobooks and man, when the narrator sucks, it makes it a really difficult <laughs> time for me to. Oh, for sure. Even if the book is amazing. It's just not it. Yeah, no, I totally get yeah. that. A narrator can definitely make or break it when it comes to like the audiobook. So one, one uh, narrator that I've really been loving lately is the guy who's doing the Murderbot Diaries. I just Oh my love, God, he's so good. I love his voice for Murderbot. It's so spot on. And he's like, so expressive. He really is. Yeah. I, I love- What is his name? If we're going to talk about him, we need to tell everybody yeah, his name. Yeah him and then i listen to obviously a lot of elizabeth evans because she be out here doing throne of glass and crescent city and all of that and she's also another very great narrator that i absolutely love what's his name kevin r free kevin, kevin r, free r free is maybe not it's the hero we asked for but the hero we deserve <laughs> definitely he is awesome he makes murderbot so involved but this isn't about murderbot so we won't get too too far off but yes he's great we love him I guess we can go into overall thoughts. Give it, give it to me straight, girl. Like, what's what's the overall tea for you? I mean, I feel like we've been saying it this whole time. We've been giving our thoughts in every category. I loved this book, dude. Yeah, I wasn't ex like, I don't know what I was expecting. I pre-ordered this after reading the description, and I was like, sure, magic, maybe, yeah, Spain. Sounds like a good time. Talk about it. I don't know. Like, sure. It like blew me away, though. Like, mm. I, yeah, I, I want to read everything Lee Bardugo now, which I mean, I've already read a lot of her stuff, but I want more of this from her. Right. The closest thing I could compare this to for like the rest of her writing catalog would be like the Ninth House series. I can't remember what the actual series is called, but yeah, but this. Even even that, it's still pretty far off. Like, this is a, a whole new thing for her, and I want more of it. Same. I, I mean, like I said, this is definitely something different that I've never read before. And I kind of felt the same way when you were reading the description to me. I was like, okay, it sounds interesting. And I will say, okay, so I don't have anything bad to say about this book. I, reading this book was... Okay, so it, it, it was kind of strange because it's not like I was, it was a steady burn. I guess that's how I would describe it. From beginning to end, I was just, I was just going along at a really great pace. I felt like everything was exactly how it needed to be. And it was great. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was like obsessively reading to get to the end. I didn't feel like I was struggling to read it by any means. I was just like rolling along. I was not thinking about the future of it. I was not, I was not thinking about anything. I was just there. I was so yeah, in focused it. and in it. 
Like I was just there and that was amazing. And I did not expect that from this book yeah. at all. It's been a while since I've like been in a book where I'm not also thinking about like, oh, you know, what is this character's motivations? What could be going on here? You know, which is, is pretty normal when you're reading a lot of books, you know, you start to see like, where is this plot going? You know, kind of what's happening here. Yeah. I could not do that. No, the pacing book. was fantastic. It's like she was yes. feeding you the information just when you needed it. Like, yeah. Definitely. And yeah. it was just done so well that I was like, holy crap. Like, I am normally not really into, like, historical type of settings. I've never really gotten into anything like that. And this makes now. me... I know, right? I'm like, wow, have I been sleeping on a genre that I could be really getting into? Because holy crap. Like, I feel like this just... It, it gave me that dash of fantasy, which I've been so yeah. heavy in for so long while pulling me into this like realism with just phenomenal freaking characters so god it was so good so yeah. freaking good i wonder if we would have loved it quite as much if there wasn't a magic element i always think about that because normally i do lean toward fantasy and if it's not fantasy there has to be a romance element which i mean there is a slight romance element in this so maybe we would For have sure. still loved it but i do think like the, I think the magic was important. Yeah. And, and I also it, feel it like it was kind part. of, it was, yeah, it was just like the little sprinkle on top that you needed and this historical fiction romance sort of book. Right. To get the dash of magic. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not like she's, she's not sitting here turning people into toads and starting thunderstorms, you know, she's fixing holes and dresses. She's, she's turning bread you know, from burnt to, you know, perfectly baked. And and she does a lot of other things later on. And she she does have powerful magic. Don't get me wrong. And yeah, it does. But it's not like, yeah, grows, but... but it's not like excessive. It's not anything yeah. crazy. She, she can't freaking teleport, you know, like she can't do all this like crazy. She's not Superwoman. You know, she's very it's like it's like a reasonable kind of magic, I guess, if there were such a thing. And all of the other like miracles or magics that other people are performing are kind of in the same wheelhouse, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not anything that is very large and flashy. It's just, it, it's, it's, yeah, I don't there, know. It's there's definitely limitations. And I will Absolutely. say that for the magic system, like it was believable and there mm -hmm. were drawbacks and definitely. So that did make it like, I, I don't know. Sometimes you read about, some stuff and books and they were talking about like some crazy magic system. It really just takes you out of it. Cause you're like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, why would they be able to do all of this? I didn't have a single thought like that while reading this. I'm like, okay, me either. We don't know where it comes from, but yeah, I guess it still makes sense. Like <laughs> definitely. I was just like, okay, I was okay with it. Vibing. Yeah. It was good the whole time. So it's five stars for me. I loved it. It was a good time. It's between a 4.75 and five stars for me. Mm -hmm. The only reason why I hesitate to say that it is a five star book is for me, that's like vibes for something to be a mm -hmm. five star read. It has to like, I just have to have a certain kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. There's really no rhyme or rationale to it. And I need to sit on this for a few more days because I literally just finished it. But yeah. <laughs> As of right now, it's it's teetering between a 4.75 and a five stars. It was, I mean, it was a wonderful experience for sure, regardless. Definitely. Mine is like, you know, normally I can be more structured in the realms of like all these different things that are really playing together into it. And it's like, you know, for me, sometimes the world building really comes through and is like, that's what makes it so good, you know? But for me, I just feel like because of the magic the romance and really just once again, I can't say it enough, the freaking characters, man. It just, it took me on a journey that I could not get enough of. And it was something so different that I was so unaccustomed to that I enjoyed so much that I was just like, damn, this is worth it. This is my vibe. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely did hit on just about every point. Oh, for sure. So I don't know. It, it, it'll, it might end up being five stars. We'll see. <laughs> You'll have to let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's the end of our spoiler free section of this. If you want to stick around for uh, 
you know, our our spoilers and stuff so we can chit chat back and forth for a minute. Feel free to hang out with us. But if not, bye. bye. Catch you next time. Okay. So I think my favorite scene in this whole book was when Santanio was telling her the story. And he was like, it's not a very happy story. And she responds with something like, I don't believe I asked for one. Like, <laughs> she gets you know? so sassy with him. And she I really does. It. His explanation, girl, like, what did you think about that? Like, his, his explanation, his backstory of like how he became the familiar, because mm. the fucking betrayal, dude. Right? I was like so angry for him. Mm hmm. Oh my god, yeah. I, and to have to go, like, years, like, to have your best friend do that to you, and then have to go year after year after year after generation, generation of, like, yeah. all of his children and the all shit his that he has shitty to go children. Through, I'm like, holy shit. That is so messed up. But it was, like, yeah, it and- was so crazy. Like, it was such a fun, like, not a fun explanation, but such a unique explanation of how he yeah. got to where he was. Yeah, I think what really hit it home for me with, like, how angry I was for him was when he was talking about, like, the original guy Mm -hmm. on his deathbed apologizing but refusing to free him. And his son was, like, horrible and, like, torturing the lengths of his regeneration or whatever. Like, like, who does that? I... Girl, yeah. like, I love you so much. And as much as I would love to tether you <laughs> to me within a 10 mile radius, I would never. <laughs> like, good God, that's so fucked, dude. And also, I really liked the luck aspect. I hated yeah. that it had to be with Victor, but how fucking cool was yeah. that? Like, that that was have, his, like, little lucky. touch of magic. Yeah, like, it's so crazy. Just. You got people just happening to turn their heads the other way or agreeing yeah. with him because he suddenly seems believable or like whatever. Like that was so freaking neat. I loved that. I did too. I I mean, that kind of brings it back to like what we were talking about with the magic system. Mm-hmm. Like no, there's no real rhyme or reason to it, but the little abilities that she gave people were mm-hmm. just cool. Yeah. And they were like just enough. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was just enough that it was getting people where they needed to be. So were you immediately sussed out by the Prince of Olives or oh my whatever, God, the yes. Prince of whatever the fuck he was? Yes. Oh my Nobody God, I just hated like him. in a competition setting where he's like mm-hmm. expressed that he desperately wants to win. And then he's just like telling her all of his secrets. No, girl. Yeah. I was exactly. mad at her at that point. I'm like, don't, why? Don't listen to him. I, and that's the thing that sucks is she just, she didn't have that experience of like dealing with people with, you know, like underhanded intentions and doing this shit. And he just seemed nice. And I think it's worse because she felt she could relate to him. Oh, you're super poor and dealing with all this shit too. Well, because like, that's oh what he no. manipulated her into. And I just, yeah, he's exactly. the worst. I hated him more than Victor. Oh, yeah. Because I, at least yeah, Victor's he, upfront about the way that he is. He's yeah, exactly. about the way that he's shitty. He may not, he may keep it to a minimum to keep up appearances with people. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, this yeah. guy tried to like, I don't know. He he's a little just, fucking snake. Yeah, he's a little weasel. God, the worst. Uh, so how did you feel about the divine child's reveal of who she really was and how old she really was? Because that? I shit. Yeah, I did not see that coming. Me either. <laughs> At all. <laughs> and it made so much sense, too. And I'm like, like oh, the she's conversations 30. that she had. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, she's she's old. She's been around for a minute. And she's just still in this little tiny child's body. I was like, Which, the fact that we got crap. no explanation for us as to how that happened. Right. But I still just, like, took it for what it was and moved on. I think it's just a yeah. testament to, like, how good the writing is. Dude, really, Because normally though, I'd be like, what the fuck, how? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're you're just, like, sitting and you're like, okay. But this is not like that. You're like, okay, cool. Well, I mean, like, she's able to see the future, you know, through her angel. I wish we could have got an explanation of, like, who that angel really was. Right. Or, or like, what was going on with that. I was so, so interested. And, you know, maybe 
it's better that way. Not having that that full explanation of everything yeah. that goes on with that. But I think it'll damn. keep us thinking about the book for a long time. I Just think like those so little too. like well, I really wonder why that was the way it was. Right? Yeah. It's oh god, there's so many little pieces like that. Uh I mean, did did you have any scene or anything in mind that like popped out to you that you just super loved? Well, it's for me it was also when she was listening to him tell the story and he's mm-hmm. like going through this just like cycle of emotions on the other side of the door listening to her take a bath and he's, yeah <laughs> he's like really struggling to like come to terms like okay well i really shouldn't do this but I'm, I'm, i really want to do this and oh, then yeah. she's just like can you come brush my hair please <laughs> and he's like really hesitant about it. she's like can can you shut up and please just do it <laughs> There was the part earlier that I loved that was just a testament of like how religious their society is and everything because she had merely mentioned needing to take a bath and he was like, Jesus Christ, woman, you need to hold on. Like, yeah. we can't be talking about you bathing. Pipe like, down. Yeah, like, like, oh, you, do you know what you do when you bathe? Like, you're naked. Like, you need to stop. <laughs> So that killed I, me. I was just like, holy crap. I wouldn't have <sighs> made it in that society. There's no way. I am so oh, old girl. All the time. Not. Girl, we would have been holding hands, burning at the stake, period. No, no what? questions <laughs> asked. We would have been a couple of crispy rotisserie chickens. <laughs> like there is no yeah. way around it. Oh my god. So what did you think of the ending? Yeah, I was literally just about to ask you that. Um Yep. <sighs> Did you think, uh, here, uh, back up. Did you think they were going to die? Yes. I did too. I fully expected them to fucking die. I thought they were going to die. And while I'm glad they didn't, Mm -hmm. I feel like it maybe would have been more impactful if they had. It could have been. Yeah. I... I do love that they made it out. And I thought she really made it interesting with the way that he literally has to die and she has to bring him back to life every single day. Like I thought that right. was just like unbearably romantic. Right. I really and so, at that, but me too. I love that. That was great. Yeah. And I felt like it was just such a, because yes, could it have been very impactful if, if they died? Absolutely. However, I felt like it kind of went with this theme of this, fairy tale ending in the most twisted way Mm -hmm. like because of the fact that he has to die and she has to bring him back to life and also that you know we find out she can just live forever because she can always heal herself she can always regenerate yeah that revelation when she has it with uh santana when they're talking about when he admits to bargaining her life essentially mm -hmm. to victor which oh my god that broke my heart <laughs> i know right when that she was had hard. to find that out i knew it was coming and you you have to know it's coming the whole time i'm just like no girl please like please have some nuance please have some understanding please see where this is coming from because it's not like he was doing this out of a choice of free will obviously you know well, so i'm I mean, glad to, to some level he was but it was also before he like he he really knew her yeah and then the more in it he was the more regretful he felt about it and while i still think for a while there he was gonna go through with it i don't know yeah it 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 did it did break my heart um but i think it's nice that after all of the shit that they went through they did get their happy ending and they had to fight so hard for it and they still have to fight for it every single day um God, it's got to make fights real awkward, though. Kiss me off. See if I bring you back tomorrow, (laughs) baby. (laughs) Try me. (laughs) Your life is literally in my hands. Oh, my God. That's so fucked. But also, I mean, it's a little true. But yeah, I I agree. I I really do. I like how it ended. I see where you're coming from on them dying. Mm -hmm. And you fully expect them to die. I mean, with as messed up as everything is, you just expect it at that point. I just didn't see a way out. I did not see a way out. Yeah, me either. And I thought it was so cool that she managed. And I also think that spoke to her progression of her going from like, hey, at the beginning of the book, the what what started off her whole fucking story is changing this burnt loaf of bread to 
it's it's renewed and then the very end of the book is she fucking teleported them out of being on fire after regenerating them consistently and then getting them the hell out of dodge including the pirate guy i thought that was hilarious yeah. like <laughs> that she just like teleported him with them and he was just like oh okay well this is fine. Oh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go over here with me mateys and go live my yeah. life. Thanks. Bye. So well, I, I thought that that was also like a cool thing. And I did like that it didn't feel totally out of the blue how she was right. able to do that because yeah. it was mentioned earlier on when her tongue split and she, she fucking ripped that guy to pieces mm -hmm. that it was because her magic was trying to help her find a way out. And then she finally gives into it and it helps them get away. I don't know. It was all, it was all very poetic. Definitely. The more we talk about it, the more I'm just like, yeah, okay. It's probably a five star book. <laughs> it, it just, it's so good. And that's why I love like talking about it and stuff is just because, I mean, I don't know, the more you talk about the stories and like the books and everything, you, you start to get wrapped up in all the stuff um, that makes it so great. I will say the last thing I want to mention, and then we can wrap this up was, did you love when her and Centennial were like doing the deed and then it just made everybody in the house horny. Yes. I and loved I that. And I don't understand how or why right. or magic did that, but I was like, the mice were fucking too? The yeah, mice? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it just like radiated off of her and, and everybody was just getting down and, oh my God, no, that's not the only thing I want to talk about. God, there's so many, there's so, so there's, like, okay. there's, there's one more thing I want to talk about too. So you can carry okay, on. Okay, good. Okay, good. Valentina, her mistress, the, the woman that treats her like shit throughout the whole time. It made me cry when she tried to fight her husband to give her to, the horse, to, to get away. Horse. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, fuck Yes. Like that is what I'm talking about. That is a woman who is shitty because she is in a shitty situation with a horrible husband and a horrible fucking life. And then guess what? She sees how this girl progresses and she wants some of that freedom for herself. She wants something else for herself too. And she wants Lucia to get away. And I just thought that that was so fucking powerful. And it's of course her husband. No, no, we're not going to fucking do that. The fact that she said what she needed to say to get out of it. And then she took up the woman lover. I was like, good for you. Yeah. Screw that man. And He's the dusty fact that as hell. Was, and the fact that it was the playwright. Yes. That's <laughs> the whole time. God, I thought that was so freaking funny. Um, it was perfect. I love that she still got her happy ending, even though like, it's just one of those things where she, you know, uh, uh, other writers would make that woman one-sided and she would just stay the evil stepmommy the whole fucking time. And it, it just, it was not that. Like, it yeah. was, this was her situation and this is what she was in and this is how she got away from it. And I loved that so much. Yeah, I do also like that even after she got back home, she was still doing everything she could to help Lucia. And oh, yeah. then the raising the money. Like a, was like a home for wayward girls. Yes, like, yes. Oh my that God. was so cute. It was great. And because then like it's... eventually the husband just leaves. <laughs> He's just like, I'm going to go stay somewhere else. Okay, bye. Yeah. Good riddance. Her standing up to him at the very end too, where she's like, I just want you to leave. Like, yeah. please just go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girl, I've been there. It was so satisfying. <laughs> yeah. Straight and, up. And the fact that this has been uh, described in some reviews that I've seen as being like a Cinderella retelling. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they give the evil stepmom her redemption and they also, instead of Cinderella going off and being rescued by a handsome prince that she literally met and spent one night with, she did it her damn self. Yeah, like, definitely. It was I great. loved that. Me too. And that was that was one of my favorite things that just came out of nowhere. I was like, wow, I really love this character. I have so much respect for her now. Like, holy yeah, shit. I loved her a lot. God, and now I've forgotten what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, no. I was so ready to hear what you wanted to say, too. I no. the heck out. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, damn. Well, if you remember it, we're going to hop off here and play some Stardew Valley. So I'm sure we'll keep on yapping then. But... Yes. I think that's all we got for you guys. So definitely 
pick this book up. Please. Um, hands Do yourself down. the favor of reading this book. Seriously. Even if it doesn't seem like something you may, you know, be into, if you're on the fence about it, just branch out, try some try new it stuff. Out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because this I'm is so glad it. that we read this. Me too. I, oh my God. Especially I after so a fate inked in blood that we were so excited yeah. for. And then it was just such a letdown. Right. This is, and this is restored my faith and humanity right and it's so funny how we went from something that was like so like oh the world building is really great in this and like you know like how how she has her magic system and all this stuff but the characters suck and then this one to the is complete like, opposite <laughs> right and this one was like the characters are so freaking amazing that you're like who gives a shit where they are like okay cool great we have this nice little backdrop that's awesome but i'm i'm not invested in that i'm invested in these freaking people so yeah it was great but um and the little yeah. droplet of romance that we got that was just so good. Yeah, very well done. Not not overdoing it at all. Just like a really great time from beginning to end. Like I said, a, a steady, nice burn. So that's it. That's it. We're done. We talked about it. We love it. Go read it. And also... Ho oh. I was going to say, hopefully I hate watching myself in this video less than I did in the last two. Yeah, maybe you could just watch it with a blindfold on. That would probably help. I'll just listen to the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Hey, this is why we have audio also, um, you know, audio only as well. If you want to listen to us on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever else you get your podcast and all that jazz. And once again, like, subscribe, share with your book loving friends. Please and thank you. Peace and blessings. We would love to get our um, <laughs> we would love to get to our content to be stressed. out there. <laughs> Yes, exactly. You know, we we really want to make our channel grow and 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 get the the book content flow in and you know just have a good time. This is like our little. I've said it before. This is our love child. We want to we want to yeah. keep it growing. We want to nourish it with more books and more. I'm not even so much worried stuff. about like doing the content per se, but I just want to build a community of people that have similar tastes because I have struggled Same. so much to find booktubers that have similar viewpoints and similar tastes to mine mm -hmm. so if this is your niche please come hang out with us i want to yeah, meet more people and so talk cool. people that are into the same stuff i know if we just had like a little community of all these book loving people and we could all mm -hmm. just be throwing out book recommendations and chitty chat yeah. about it that would I be a, i want a little book dream. found family yeah that would be really <laughs> all i want cute. is a found family a little fantasy found family <laughs> <laughs> A little before. smutty fantasy found family. Let's be, let's be real, okay? We don't have to be but smutty anyhow. with each other, but just no, no, fine. yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> we have people that we're already smutty with. Mine's farting um, on the home. bed right over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, okay, bye. Guys. Yeah, I love you. Bye.